Good afternoon and welcome to our parent chat today on Wired for Connection. Um, today's presentation is going to be about tips for building strong relationships with your children. Um, my name is Tanya Lentz and I am an infant and early childhood mental health consultant for Wood County um, here at the Children's Resource Center. Um, down in the lower left hand corner we just like to point out um, some of our grant funders that that make these videos possible. I think that's everything so let's go ahead and get started with our presentation. So children are born with a need for human connection. It's not just something that we recommend, it's a need. Um, just like the need for food, water, shelter, um, we um, are all programmed for that, that need for human connection so we can thrive and grow as infants. If children do not get it, um, we see what we call the failure to thrive. And so we know how important it is from infancy that they um, form a connection with some adult around them. And so we really like to um, really look at human connection and the need for it from infancy all the way up through uh, adulthood. As children get older, um, they need to feel connected to feel safe to explore and learn. And so we look at what we call the four critical elements of connection. So to connect with a child, four things need to be present. The first one is eye contact. Pretty self-explanatory. You need to be down at the child's letter level and you need to be trying to make a connection with them by looking them straight into the eyes and, and letting them know that you are there and that you are listening by looking at them. The next thing that we need is a, an adult presence. We need you to be present in the moment. And what that means is that you are free of other distractions. So you're not just in the same room with them and you're watching TV or you're paying bills or you're cooking dinner, you're present in that moment with that child. And so if they are talking to you, you are looking at them, you are nodding, you are communicating that you're present in that moment with the child. The next thing is a sense of touch. Touch is the only sense that we cannot live without. And so we talk about people who lo lose their hearing or lose their vision and then those other touches or senses kind of um, make up for that loss. Touch is something we cannot live without. We need people and human connection and, and to be able to, to touch other people and feel that connection. And playfulness. So children need to know that you are there, you're, you're in that moment with them, and that you're able to play with them because that is how they learn. And so they're looking towards adults to see that they have a sense of playfulness and can help them learn in their environment. All four of these things are what we call the critical elements of connection. And Dr. Becky Bailey's research shows that when a child gets these four things, they get a chemical, a dopamine, release in their brain that tells them that this connection feels good. Once they get that dopamine and it feels good in their brain, they seek that out. So when they continue to get these four critical elements of connection, then they know that that feels good and they're gonna to continue to seek that out, which is what we want. We want them to seek out good connection instead of attention for bad behaviors. So some of the ways that we can do this with children and, and establish a good connection with them is when we take them places and drop them off because we have to go to work and we have to do lots of different things, we want them to know and to feel safe in their environment. So we can come up with different ways that we greet them when we see them and when we say goodbye to them. So coming up with little rituals, letting them pick some of the ways that you're able to say goodbye to them, get down at their level, touch them, let them know that you will be back to get them and that you want them to have fun and to learn while you are gone. Um, same thing when you come back, limit the distraction, um, sign them out, do all the things you need to do, and then greet them in a way that you are there and that you are present in that moment and you're making eye contact, you're down at their level, you say hello, how was your day? Um, so, so we're able to provide these greetings and goodbye rituals to make them feel safe. And we're connecting with them at the same time. I love you rituals. Um, 
If we know that connection requires these four elements, we need to plan activities and routines that incorporate those elements into our everyday lives. So I love your rituals are really cute little ways that we can connect with them in a fun way. They're little rhymes or songs that we sing anyway, but they come up with little hand gestures and movements that you do with the child and um, you complete this test together. So you would be face to face with the child. We're getting that eye contact, which is what we want. You're down at their level. You're in that moment. You are present in that moment with them. You are singing the song with them. You're doing the hand gestures with them. And we get that sense of touch from that because we might be um, slapping our hands together. We might be doing handshakes, things like that. Um, and then there's that sense of playfulness because we're completing this together and it's playful and it's fun and we've learned these little hand gestures together. Um, cute little things that you can do. Um, you can look them up online. Um, they're readily available and fun ways to connect with kids for play. So floor play is another one of those things where you look at and we're like, yeah, well, that seems simple and it really is but we're down at their levels. So we're not just sitting on the couch while they play with their toys. We're sitting down on the floor with them and we're letting them run the show. We're saying, okay, what do you wanna play? And letting them pick the, what they want to do, showing us how to do it, and we're down at their level. We're getting all four of those critical elements of connection, eye contact, presence. We're in that moment. We're not distracted by all these other adult things. We are laughing with them, so there's playfulness. All of the things are there. So it's a great way to connect with the kid and really let them know that we are there and we are interested in what they want to do. Reading a book, another really, really simple thing, but all of those critical elements of connection are there when we're reading a book with a child. So we can look at them, um, make eye contact with them. We can ask them what's going on in the story, ask them questions about what we just read, ask them questions about what's coming next, if it's a book we've already read, or if we're going to talk about what we think might happen and predict what's going to happen in the book. Um, lots of different ways that we can do this. So eye contact, it's there. Playfulness, um, we are engaging in that book. We are in the characters of the book. We're talking about the book. We're playing and having fun and enjoying the book together. We're present in that moment, absolutely. And so all of these things are present um, when we're reading a book with a child. And it's a great sense of touch because we're, they're sitting on our lap or they're laying right next to us and we're, and we're engaging in this activity. So the last thing that we like to talk about is that kids are wired for human connection, not necessarily technology. And so we need to limit their screen time. And, and during this pandemic, it can be really, really difficult. Um, this is a conversation that we try to have with lots of parents because they need that human connection where we're making eye contact and touching them. Um, and we need to limit screen time as much as possible. Lots of kiddos are learning online right now, so we, this is really something we need to be vigilant about and, and limiting the, the iPad time or the, the TV time at night because we don't want to overwhelm them with the technology to the point where they're not getting that sense of human connection. So um, it puts a lot more stress on families because it's not just we get home from work and we're trying to make dinner and so we put the kiddo in front of the TV because it's easy. We need to try to engage them in some human connection during that time and, and be very creative about how we spend our evenings and how we spend time away from the television and away from the iPad and the video games. Um, so just to kind of go over this really quick, um, 18 months and younger, we don't like screen time at all. Um, so we try not to um, force that on them. They're intrigued by our phones and things like that, but we don't want to necessarily um, give them something to do or sit them in front of the TV. 18 months to two years, um, we need to limit it as much as possible and avoid solo use. So if we're going to play games on it or teach them games on the iPad or, or um, maybe a cartoon where they're learning would be okay as long as we're sitting there with them and engaging in that, in that game. 
two to five, um, we recommend um, an hour a day and no more than that. So we really want to try to limit that as much as possible to just an hour a day. Six and older, um, we need to place some limits on it. So we need to know what the children are doing, how much time they're spending on it for school, um, other things like that. And then we need to come up with an agreement that we limit how much they have of screen time. We wanna encourage outside play. We wanna um, encourage um, connection time with, with adults as well. Um, and, and just be very vigilant about knowing how much time they are on their screens. And so, maybe just one day without saying anything to our kids, we're just gonna add up how much time they had of screen time and then look at that and make a decision that you think is gonna be best for your family. Um, so the resources here I have, I got lots of information from Conscious Discipline, um, the Devereaux Center for Resilient Children, and um, I left my email address here as well if you would have any questions or would like any resources that I provided in today's parent chat.